Dear students, today we will consider another important heading of profit and loss statement that is cost of production. Here also we have to keep in mind cardinal principle that is no omission and no duplication as large number of factors affect cost of production both in direct and indirect manner. Our vigilance of deciding methodology and its adherence is of importance. First, let us introduce the topic. In the chemical project economics, cost of production plays a key role. It represents operating expenses, which are of recurring nature. I will repeat it again, which are of recurring nature. They have significant impact on the selling price and ultimately profitability. In its simplest form, purely on economic considerations, the dependence of selling price on cost of production is given by, that is selling price is equal to beta into bracket project cost plus gross cost of production, wherein gross cost of production is equal to cost of production plus administrative expenses if administrative site is located separately. Beta represents the return on investment that is the project cost and other investment related costs such as interest etc. Operating expenses are incurred after the plant is commissioned and the production begins. These expenses though incurred regularly and repetitively are divided into direct and indirect costs. The direct costs have a direct bearing on relation to the quantity of finished sellable product produced, raw materials, utilities, catalysts, packing material and affluent treatment chemicals are examples of direct costs. Indirect costs are salaries, administrative costs, factory overhead, selling expenses, etc. and they have no direct relation to quantities of product produced. The project may be multi-product plant or a multi-location unit. The manufacturer of alkanolamines, namely mono, di and triethanol amines is an example of a multi-product plant by just changing the operating conditions the product mix can be weighed using the same feedstock, namely ammonia and ethylene oxide. A refinery producing a variety of products and pharmaceutical unit producing different products on campaign basis are also examples of multi-product plants. Now let us look at raw materials, chemicals and catalysts. The details of raw materials, auxiliary chemicals and catalysts required for the project under consideration are given by the process licensor that is the know-how supplier in basic engineering package. These are presented in terms of tons of material consumed per ton of product or kilogram of catalyst consumed per ton of product form. The entire specification of raw materials, auxiliary chemical and catalyst are given in terms of material specification sheet. In some processes, particularly catalytic, the raw materials consumption can vary from time to time. By and large, we get consumption figure for the start of the run, that is the startup, middle of the run and end of the run that is just before changing the catalyst. While making a bankable document for term loan, if one has access, the consumption figures at the end of the run may be considered as a conservative approach. The price of raw material consists of the money we spend to buy them and deliver the same at the manufacturing site or plant. The three components of any raw material cost therefore consist of the basic price, the statutory duties as and when applicable such as excise, sale tax, eventually VAT and import duty, 
and the transportation charges next is important aspect is packaging the next important factor in the cost of production is the cost associated with packaging material the cost of packaging could be high for consumer product such as toilets cosmetics beverages pharmaceuticals products and paints on the other end for bulk chemicals or commodity chemical the cost of packing could be very low while perfumes are sold in 25 to 100 ml bottles with a spray device bulk chemicals such as methanol is sold in 200 liter drums and road tanker some chemicals such as orthoxylene benzene toluene are sold straight away in the road tanker having capacity of 10 to 20 cubic meters the packing cost would depend on end user of the product and hence generalization could be risky it needs to be estimated depending upon the product under consideration salaries and wages the contribution of salary and wages can vary from 5 to 10% in the cost of production for petrochemical projects and about 15% in pharmaceuticals and fine chemical projects due to highly skilled work personnel salaries and wages of all people working at production site along with their perquisites are considered the number of people working in a totally automatic plant could be less than those working in a multi stage batch process plants as a backup towards estimate we need to identify people of all categories such as works manager managers chief engineers production managers maintenance engineer with the entire team right up to helpers production supervisor senior operator junior operator helper people in store supporting personnel in human resource development department security personnel and so on working in the plant along with their salaries and perquisites next is a factory overhead factory overhead include all expenses associated with operating a plant which have not been accounted for repairs and maintenance charges that is consumable store insurance miscellaneous expenses such as communication expenses office stationery writing materials and so on are included in the factory overhead repairs and maintenance charges can be computed and listed in table it must be remembered that cost of spare in the plant and machinery item is not the cost of maintenance the r and d expenditure as percentage of total sales turnover is far less in our country than that in the developed countries as a result our cost of production are always higher due to somewhat inefficient technology many times the management concentrate on keeping salaries and wages under control as a tool toward reducing the cost of production the contribution of this factor toward the cost of production being of the order of 10% one cannot achieve substantial reduction in the cost by not offering reasonable salary package on the other end the demoralized workforce can reduce the production rate particularly in batch processing involving various unit operations and unit processes gross cost of production the elements of cost of production discuss above essentially deal with the cost incurred or would be incurred at the production site as mentioned earlier there is a distinct possibility of having general administration at different site the cost incurred at this site would also be taken into consideration as listed below administrative expenses the number of people at admin site are listed along with the salaries and perquisites the administrative overhead here include 
office communication charges, office stationery in all form, insurance and other miscellaneous operating expenses related to the smooth functioning of the office. Next is the sales expenses. The number of people in the sales division is counted in case they are not accounted earlier and the salary of all such people with perquisite is considered. Selling expenses do include all promotional expenses such as advertisement in television, documentary in cinema house, advertisement in professional magazines, bulletins and so on. Having estimated expenses at admin site, one can now compute gross cost of production. Gross cost of production is equal to cost of production plus administrative expenses plus sales expenses. As a rule of thumb, the administrative expenses, often known as admin expenses, do not exceed 15% of the cost of the production at the production site. Normative cost of production, when the question of subsidy by the government arises, as in case of the fertilizer, the computation of cost of production differs slightly from that discussed above. The cost of production is now known as normative cost of production, which is equivalent to gross cost of production, that is the cost of production plus administrative expenses plus sales expenses. While computing selling price of the product, retention price is calculated by taking into account post-take returns as spelled out by the finance ministry from time to time. There are fixed post-take returns on equity and one cannot take any arbitrary figure. The schedule for project evaluation purpose only we consider lifespan of any project to be 10 years, even though the project continues to operate profitably thereafter. The capacity utilization of a newly conceived project varies from year to year. The project may not achieve 100% capacity utilization due to so many factors beyond the control of project owner. The first what we got, raw material component, so raw material X, Y, Z, basic rate, rupees per ton, then excise, then sale tax, then import duty, if any, transportation expenses, and total cost in rupees per ton. X it is A, Y it is B, and for Z it is C. Then we come raw material, X, Y, Z, consumption is P, Q, R, rate is A, B, C naturally, and then component is P into A, Q into B, and R into C. Similar detail backup should be given for all elements of the cost of production. Thank you very much for patient hearing.